Hello and welcome to ATI 4205 Applied Logistics. Uh, this session will address the history of logistics and how it evolved from the workplace all the way to the global level. Uh, looking at logistics system uh, or as a system, uh, you will see the importance of addressing the components and their interaction on a supply chain um, between on uh, the supply chain between the partners, uh, domestic and international. The logistics activity framework will be introduced, which again, part of it might uh, apply uh, in a certain organization, but not apply in other organizations. The private industry did not use the term logistics until uh, recently. While uh, military used the term logistics in 1950s and 1960s. Companies had departments such as material housing, warehousing, uh, machining, uh, um, etc., but was not labeled as logistics. Looking at the scope and influence, uh, you can see that uh, over the past decades, logistics have evolved from being at the workplace level uh, and looking at workstations, logistics to uh, facility level, to corporate level, to supply chain level, and then uh, global logistics. The next few slides will address each one of them uh, separately. Workplace logistics is defined as the flow of material at single workstation. Uh, in this case, the objective will be to uh, streamline the uh, movement of an ind individual working at a machine uh, or assembly line. Example of a problem, uh, um, uh, falling bags from a suction cup, that could be a problem, twisted box uh, uh, at the end of the line, uh, backup on uh, pe pelletali uh, pelletization or pelletizing, uh, all these uh, could be problems at the workstation level. Uh, this is a funny clip from the American television uh, sitcom uh, I Love Lucy, which was aired in, in the 1950s. Uh, this clip shows uh, some of the problems of workplace, although it's like uh, in a funny uh, uh, way, but uh, it shows the movement of the product on the conveyor and uh, how it could at a certain point make uh, a problem. It's so funny, uh, you should see it and um, uh, it's a good idea or it will give you a good idea about the logistics at that point. Uh, managers started uh, looking at logistics from a broader point of view due to, to the interaction between different workplace stations. Um, that moved logistics from the workstation level to a facility or plant level. This slide shows the layout of a facility and the different uh, related workstations. Facility logistics can be defined as the flow of material between workstations with, within uh, the uh, four walls of a uh, facility, uh, and we call it like inter-workstation intra-facility. So a facility can be a factory, terminal, warehouse, distribution center. Uh, the video in this slide shows logistics failure in a warehouse and you know again you can look at the videos all the videos that I provided for you in the slide uh, will give you a good idea about some problems in the uh, in the logistics in uh, uh, real world uh, factories warehouses distribution center um, uh, this one is uh, just a minute and uh, uh, 30 seconds um, and it doesn't have a sound so I will show you uh, what happens just a small uh, incident in moving stuff in uh, the warehouse or in a distribution center can make a disaster. Um, and uh, if you'd like you can uh, increase the size for uh, this one or open it in a different uh, tab but uh, again that will show you look at the uh, accident when the forklift hit the uh, one of the shelves and uh, the whole warehouse went down on top of the workers and that's one of the incidents uh, that might happen in uh, a warehouse. <coughs> 
with the expansion of industry and companies owning many facilities, uh, logistics interaction moved to the organization or corporate level. A company that has uh, more than one plant, they need to move the stuff from one place to another, from one facility to another, from one building or one plant to another. Um, so it has like a distribution center, it has um, uh, plants, and for that they need also a transportation fleet that can move the stuff from uh, the different locations um, to each other. And that will be like a, a more of a corporate point of view for logistics. So now logistics started to evolve to include operations and activities at the corporate level and uh, they need to think how um, uh, things can be moved between the uh, uh, raw material to the factory to being processed to the distribution center and uh, basically to sending it to uh, the uh, end user or uh, customer. The corporate logistics is defined as the flow of material and information between the facilities and processes of a corporation. So now we are talking about inter-workstation, we have workstation that interact with each other, inter-facility, that means we have uh, facilities that interact with, e with each other, but also we have intra-corporate, uh, where the corporate is the one who uh, will be uh, uh, planning and uh, implementing the uh, logistics between the different buildings or different plants or different facilities. Uh, the objective evolved to develop and maintain a profitable uh, customer service policy while maintaining and reducing total logistics cost. More movement, more cost, uh, we need uh, trucks as we said before, we need trucks, we need fuel, we need insurance, so now we need to try to do all that uh, with uh, uh, the, uh, the goal in mind is to optimize or uh, reduce the cost as much as possible. For the past few decades, companies started forming chains of uh, partners to work with uh, each other, uh, competing with other industries, moving of goods and services evolved to the supply chain level. Supply chain is optimized when material information and money flow simultaneously in real time and paperless. Supply chain logistics is defined as the flow of material information and money between corporates which means now we are talking about inter-workstations, uh, inter-facility, inter-corporate and intra-supply chain and that's between the partners of the supply chain. The supply chain logistics can be form, uh, from supplier to cus uh, co consumer or customer from manufacturer to consumer uh, or from wholesaler to uh, consumer. If companies are not dealing directly with the consumer, uh, then the supply chain logistics can be from a supplier to wholesaler or supplier to retailer or manufacturer, manufacturer to uh, retailer. With the advancement of technology and communication companies uh, started um, uh, to uh, communicate with each other more, uh, they started to uh, um, uh, uh, have the flow of material more efficient between uh, not only uh, the uh, different companies but also different companies around the world, around the globe. So uh, the uh, companies around the globe became connected and the flow of material information and transactions became easier. That made the supply chain logistics evolve to a global uh, logistics. The global logistics is defined as the flow of material information and money between countries now. We are talking about countries, not only uh, partners in supply chain in the same uh, country or same place. It connects suppliers of supplier with its customers of customer internationally. Global logistics is much more complicated than domestic logistics given the differences in languages. You will be de dealing with different language, uh, rules and policies, different rules and policies for each country, uh, different currencies, uh, different time zones and cultures, and many other factors that will be involved uh, just between uh, these two countries. 
to ensure efficient and effective flow of material agreements between these countries has to be established and have been established. The major activities within the logistics system uh, which maps to the component we addressed before are customer response, inventory planning and management, uh, uh, supply, uh, transportation, warehousing, uh, and uh, distribution center operations. Each one of these activities include many sub-activities and tasks related to the movement of material information, people, and transactions. Activities must have goals and measures to ensure achieving these goals. Uh, the process of each activity should have a defined design and identify requirements. This is the general framework which could be used to identify logistics system activities. It might slightly differ from one organization to the other, but in general this framework covers most of uh, the common activities that's been used in the uh, logistics system. The customer response activities in involve uh, developing, um, maintaining a customer uh, service policy, which is defined as the contract between the logistics uh, organization and the customer, uh, defining service uh, targets, uh, such as fill rates, response times, uh, minimum order quantities, terms and conditions for returns, and so on. The activities of order entity, order processing, invoicing, collecting or collections, and monitoring uh, customer uh, satisfactions. Uh, the inventory, uh, planning, and management uh, activities and the purpose of these activities is to determine uh, or maintain the lowest inventory levels possible uh, that will meet customer uh, service policy requirements. These activities uh, involve forecasting demand and sales, uh, order quantity engineering uh, such as uh, when to order and uh, what will be the quantity to order, uh, replenishment, uh, planning to uh, make sure that uh, items are uh, available, we need it, uh, and uh, how, how much uh, do we need to, uh, to bring to replenish, and inventory uh, deployment. Uh, logistics uh, supply uh, activities uh, which involve uh, developing, maintaining a supplier, service policy, sourcing uh, of a supplier, finding the proper supplier for the material that I need, so I need to uh, do uh, supplier selection, make sure that you know I selected the um, uh, correct uh, source for uh, my uh, material. And then we have supplier integration. Once we have that supplier, we can integrate the supplier with the, the uh, supply chain as a partner. And then purchasing order processing, uh, buying and payments, and that will be the end of the operation with uh, those activities. The purpose of these activities is to minimize total acquisition cost uh, while maintaining a meeting availability, response time, and quality requirements. Uh, transportation activities which involve network design and uh, optimization, uh, shipment management, uh, fleet and uh, container management, uh, carrier management and freight management. The purpose of these activities is to link all, all pick up and deliver to points uh, within the response time requirements and transportation limitations at the lowest possible cost. Uh, warehousing or distribution centers operation are activities which inv uh, involve receiving, putting away, storing, uh, order, order picking and shipping. The purpose of these activities is to minimize the cost of labor, uh, space and equipment in the warehouse while maintaining or meeting uh, cycle time and shipping accuracy and uh, storage capacity uh, requirements. To minimize cost and or to maximize efficiency and to maximize the profit, uh, we optimize the following. Uh, we need to look at customer service policy. Uh, 
uh, that will be part of the uh, things that will minimize the cost and increase efficiency uh, we need to look at purchase order quantities uh, how much do, do we need to order what will be the right uh, um, quantity to order uh, products sources uh, which one is the best where do we get our product from uh, the location of our, our distribution centers and we select the location in a way strategic way uh, to uh, be closer either to the customer or closer to the supplier and we'll talk about these in details in later chapters uh, product uh, placement in the warehouse even where to put the product in the warehouse it's very important to optimize and to increase efficiency uh, for example, if we want to, uh, to optimize customer service policy, we will address um, uh, total uh, logistics costs, which will equal inventory costs plus response time costs plus uh, lost sales costs if I didn't have the item in um, uh, place. So I lose sales and that will have a cost and I need to include it in my formula. With the objective of minimizing total cost, total logistic costs, uh, subject to uh, those are the constraints or the limitation that inventory availability is greater than customer service inventory target and response time is less than customer service response time target or their expectations so that would be all for this session if you have any questions please let me know thank you and have a great day